Kalax in here, and if you guys enjoyed this video, remember that you guys should become patrons over on Patreon to support the channel, or come talk with us on our Discord server. So today, I wanted to basically present the idea of well, a couple things. So first, like, the ability to play as Xehanort, um, somewhere in Kingdom Hearts 3, and then also a bit about Xehanort's past, because we don't know a lot, and so I have some kind of ideas that I want to throw around. Obviously, these ideas are connected because... If there is a Xehanort tutorial, right, obviously we'd be looking into uh, his past and whatnot. And obviously, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to start with that clip of, uh, you know, Master Ericus and Xehanort, like, you know, as children, doing that doing that uh, weird <laughs> chess match with the uh, slightly elevated and then not elevated chess board and all that stuff. And that's probably when they're like, Keyblade Masters in training. At least that's what I would say, I don't know. But I think that... You know, every Kingdom Hearts game has a tutorial. Most video games have tutorials, right? And though most are with Sora and, like, the other main characters, you know, when applicable, like in Birth by Sleep, obviously the tutorial's with all the characters you can play in Birth by Sleep. I think that, you know, Kingdom Hearts 2's tutorial, like, basically starting with Roxas, you know, while Sora is almost, like, switched to as a playable character later, I think that would suggest that it's, it's very much possible, you know, that... Xehanort could be, um, our, uh, tutorial, our, like, um, our initial, like, I guess, like, entry, like, into the game, like, learning the game mechanics, all of that stuff, and, you know, if they do use sort of the chess match and, like, that entire thing to start the game, like, that would sort of make sense, because then you can play as Xehanort, like, in those opening scenes, and, like, I think that the reasoning for this is... Like, it's important to look at why they used Roxas, like, for Kingdom Hearts 2, for the tutorial. Because, like, ignoring 358 over two days, which wasn't out yet, right? This is, like, a natural way to introduce Roxas and, I guess, introduce his story, right? Which is, you know, fundamental to understand what Sora's gonna be going through later in the game without, like, shoving in, like, heavy exposition, you know, throughout the game where it wouldn't necessarily make sense, right? So instead of just, like, shoving in Roxas clips, like, throughout the game, you just have, you know, this entire bit with Roxas at the beginning, it, like, gets you into the game, it shows you how to play all that stuff, right? Um, and so I think that that makes sense. Like, the game starts with Roxas because his history and his past is important, and we need to be able to relate with him for later, and, you know, it, it gives us more information about the conflicts that are going to arise in Kingdom Hearts 2, right? And I think that the same could be said for Xehanort, honestly, which is why, like, I kind of wanted to do a video on this. Like, I don't know if other people have done videos on this. I try to not to watch too many videos that relate to something that I may make a video on, so I'm not sure what other people have said, but, like, there's an idea that Nomura has put out there that he treats Xehanort like the hero sometimes and Sora like the villain. And so you could say... Like, all the games have basically been leading up to this. You know what I mean? Like, all the games have been leading up to this, like, final showdown with Xehanort. Because in the past, we've defeated him. We've stopped what he's doing, but we haven't, like, gotten rid of him for good. So now it's like, this is a final showdown. Like, we're getting rid of him for good this time, right? And we don't know that much about his past. Like, his past outside of the current timeline. You know what I mean? Because even though Birth by Sleep is 10 years ago, and you could say that that's a game, like, in the past compared to, like, the present, which is with Sora, right? Like, I don't know how to explain this very well, but, like, Xehanort joining with Ansem is a part of his history, but that was in Birth by Sleep. Like, that was a part of the Birth by Sleep timeline. And not necessarily, like, not necessarily a look at stuff past his timeline. I think that's a good way to sort of say it, you know what I mean? Like, looking at, like, stuff that happened outside of the timeline of the games, you know what I mean? Like, I think that, like, the flashback to the chess match would sort of be like that. Like, it's an event that happens outside of the timeline of any of the games. And my point is, like, for such a big story element, like, Xehanort is, like, the literal big bad, you know what I mean? Like, we don't know that much about him. We don't even know that much about, like their process in general, like, we don't know, like, who trained them, we don't know, like, how they got chosen to be Keyblade wielders, like, we don't know what sort of system was in place to, like, pit, like, just, you know, take kids away from their homes and, like, hey, you're gonna train with the Keyblade now, right? Like, the tutorial could give us an opportunity to, like, show him in his youth with Ericus, like, show how he was as a kid, but also sort of all of that stuff, and I think that's super cool. So this is kind of where I want to get into, like, I guess theories about Xehanort's past, because obviously this would be shown in the tutorial, and so I think that it's pretty important, you know what I mean? Like, I'd say that this is an important part, um, 
because in the chess match scene, right, here's something that never made sense to me, okay? In the chess match scene, Xehanort is talking about the ancient Keyblade War, right? And it could be possible, like, for the tutorial, you know, like, to show when Xehanort started to get interested, you know what I mean? It could show, like, Xehanort and Eric is growing apart as this quest to, like, relive or, like, l start the Keyblade War again, right? You know, like, continues, or starts to consume him, I should say. Like, it all starts and that's what causes them to grow apart. And, like, they also mention that it's their master's favorite story, right? And what I'm confused about, though, is re-watching this scene, it sounds like Xehanort is new. You know what I mean? Like, he's asking this as if they haven't trained together, like, for a long period of time, which doesn't make, like, any sense necessarily. Like, Xehanort's like, have you heard of the Keyblade? And he's like, yeah, it's the Master's favorite story. But that makes me think, like... If they were trained together, like, he would know that Ericus has heard of the Keyblade War, or know that it's the Master's favorite story. You know what I mean? Unless the Master didn't tell Xehanort and only told Ericus, which would also be a little weird. You know, and Ericus says, you know, I've never heard of these Lost Masters, where Xehanort obviously has. So, it doesn't, it just doesn't seem like a conversation that would happen, like, with two people that, like, know each other well. Because imagine, like, Aqua and Terra, like, having this conversation, like, Oh, have you heard of the Keyblade War? Uh, yeah, it's the Master's favorite story. We have the same Master, aren't you paying attention? Like, that just seems weird to me, that's all. And so, this sort of brings me, I guess, to how I think that the tutorial would play out. And so, I'm gonna just throw out some ideas. Not all of them will work with each other, because some of them are a little bit contradictory. Um, let me know, again, you guys, it, your ideas for how this played out. Like, maybe it won't even happen. I just think that it's cool to brainstorm like this, so, you know, that's all. So, because of the conversation that's happening in the E3 trailer, basically, like, the first thinking- the first thing- the first thing that I'm thinking about is that, like, Ericus is a student of Yen Sid or another master, and, like, they're simply just visiting Xehanort, who may have been taken under the wing of someone else. Like, almost like they're split into two groups. Like, you have the Keyblade Masters who train to preserve light, right? That's, like, Ericus. You know, he, uh, took, like, Aqua and Terra for that. Yen Sid would have taken Ericus for that. And then you have Keyblade Masters that train with the Xehanort, like, Xehanort's Keyblade, right? That train to preserve the Keyblade and pass down the Keyblade. And so that could kind of open up the universe to have, like, oh, you know, like, there are a bunch of different groups of Keyblade Masters and they all have different goals, sort of like how in Union Cross you have the different unions, right? And so this could be, like, almost a remnant of past unions, you know what I mean? And so maybe that there are different sort of groups throughout the world, um, throughout the worlds, I should say. That, you know, they are Keyblade Masters, they pick people to pass the Keyblade down to, and they all have different goals that are sort of remnants of the past, if that makes sense. Um, and this would only be further confirmed by that conversation they're having, like, because if Xehanort, you know, and Ericus have never really talked to each other before and they're students of different masters, he could be like, hey, do you know about the Keyblade more? My master told me about it, you know what I mean? And Ericus is like, yeah, it's my master's favorite story too, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like something like that, and so it could be like, this is just like a group training day, you know, like, what I mean? Like, almost as if, like, you know, Vanitas, like, came to train with Aqua, Terra, and Ven for one day, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, that would be, like, a whole other mess, but you guys get the point. And maybe that's why, like, Xehanort believes, like, the future has already been written and looks up at the Keyblade while Ericus, like, mentions him changing it. Like, they're supposed to almost be fated rivals against each other. Like, Ericus was trained by his master to sort of uphold light and fight darkness, right? And Xehanort is, you know, supposed to pass down the Keyblade and achieve the Keyblade War, and, like, he believes that, the, like, the future's already been written. So, like, this could be, like, a friendly visit between rivals that would end with, like, a friendly sparring match for the tutorial, I think. Or, it could even start with their own test of mastery. Like, going back to my last idea, like, if Xehanort's master, like, is, you know, um, sort of friends with all these other masters, with other students, like, similar to how Yensid tries to get a hold of, like, Xehanort and Ericus, you know what I mean? Like, maybe one of these masters is in charge and is like, hey, bring all your students here for the mark of mastery, and just, like, you know, all these people, like, from the different worlds, they come in, they, they do the mark of mastery test together with all these different Keyblade Master students across the world, right? 
But moving away from that, let's assume that Xehanort and Ericus do have the same master for a minute and they're having a weird conversation. Like, let's say that Xehanort's new, maybe, and is like, hey, have you heard of the Keyblade War? Because, you know, I just got here and the master just told me and Ericus is like, yeah, he does that. It's the master's favorite story, you know what I mean? Like, that could be sort of the subtext there, right? I have an idea where Xehanort may actually just steal the Keyblade, right? Or the master decides to give it to him after passing the mark of mastery. But I think stealing it would be a very interesting development. Like, Xehanort looks up at the the wall and he's like yeah I'm taking that shit and like his obsession with the Keyblade War gets him to betray the master that took him off the island right that took him in and also you know his friend Ericus and you know we don't even really know where Aqua and Terra came from like like I would like to see the process of how they just abduct people from their homes and make them Keyblade wielders if that makes sense I would also like to see like Ericus get tainted from the situation early on like if Xehanort just like up and stole the Keyblade, like, what I would want them to do is be like, like, oh, that little bit of darkness in his heart, like, it got, it, it got him, you know what I mean? Like, zero darkness, only light, you know what I mean? Because, like, a traumatic event, a traumatic event when you're, like, a child or a teenager could have, like, impacted him for the rest of her li his life, you know what I mean? So, like, his friend, like, you know, acting all nice and then betraying them to get the Keyblade, like, that is some wild nonsense, you know what I mean? Um... I guess last, I, I wasn't thinking about this until now, but, like, Yensid being the one who trained them would be kind of interesting. Like, we would see a young Yensid, which, like, doesn't necessarily, like, exist in the Disney canon, you understand what I'm saying? Um, and maybe, like, the Keyblade was hung up on the wall for safekeeping, rather than passing it down since, you know, Yensid, especially Yensid, would be like, that shit's dangerous, like, we don't wanna, we don't fuck with that, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I feel like, you know, Xehanort, you know, would just sort of come in and take it, you know what I mean? And that's why Yensid contacts Xehanort and Ericus, maybe, because even though Xehanort, like, ran off with the Keyblade or whatever, they were still trained by him, and so he still wants to contact both of them, you know what I mean? Because Yensid, I don't know, he seems like a pretty forgiving person. All oh, the follies of use. Yes, he took my Keyblade. But, you know, to make sense with Birth by Sleep, it could make sense that Yensid just gave him it, you know what I mean? But a nice, like, scene transition that I thought of, like, while I was thinking about this is, like, you know, Yensid and Xehanort, like, inside the, the uh, you know, mysterious tower together or whatever, like, you know, your training's over, you're a master now, like, go forth and, you know, find other students, uh, you know what I mean, like, abandon wherever they were before, you know what I mean, and, like, find a new place, and, like, that place kind of looks like Land of Departure, like, where they're having the chess match anyway, or another place, maybe, and so it could be, like, you know, Ericus is gonna take Land of Departure, you gotta go find your own place, find your own students, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, like, a nice scene transition would be, you know, Xehanort leaving the tower, and then, like, Sora, Donald, and Goofy walking in to show, like, the passage of time and you're out of the tutorial mode and stuff like that. Anyway, this has been a long video. And I don't usually do videos where I'm on camera talking about stuff like this. Like, this is my first Kingdom Hearts video. The other ones have been gameplay and I was just sort of, uh, you know, reading off a script and now I'm just sort of, you know, spitballing, uh, with minimal notes. So anyway, Obviously not all of this would happen. It, some of it is contradictory to each other, but I think that this is fun and that's basically all for me guys. So make sure you guys leave your thoughts on all of this down below, your ideas for a beginning tutorial, if you would want to play as Xehanort, what Xehanort's past is, anything else that we've talked about in this video. If you guys want to clear up the chess match for me, because like when I talked about that, I'm like a lot of people think they have the same master, but like this conversation doesn't make that much sense. Um, if they both had the same master for the same period of time, if one of them, you know, was longer than the other then it would make sense I think but anyway I will see you guys later bye hello everybody it is Kellaxon here if you guys enjoyed this video remember that you guys should become $10 patrons over on patreon or any level of patrons as $10 patrons get to request uh videos that we get to do our $5 patrons get early access to basically uh all of the content uh that we uh put out among other rewards and our $1 patrons get access to our Discord server, so if any of this interests you, you guys should check it out. Bye, guys.